what I'm looking for, I'm just looking for flowers which have got some shade behind them, but the actual flowers in the sun so that it just enhances. So when I come to edit, it just uh, it really highlights the flower. These would be quite good here. Maybe a really nice way to learn more about the wildflower. Start taking photos of them. They're beautiful. I can't deny it, I get very excited by wildflowers. <laughs> <laughs> everyone welcome back to a new video we are still in Italy we're in the Iosta Valley in the Italian Alps and today we're doing a really exciting family adventure we are walking out to a refuge we're going to the Rifugio Grand Turnalin which is like at the foot of Grand Turnalin which is a mountain and also um, Mount Rosetta and there's quite a lot of big peaks around there um, yeah, so we're walking about three hours to get there, probably four hours with breaks. Um, we're giving ourselves lots of time with this little one who <laughs> likes to sit and just have little breaks now and again. Um, but yeah, it should be really cool. If you don't know what a refuge is, by the way, it is a like a mountain hut that they have in many parts of the world. Um, I know of the ones in Europe, um, but I know they have them in... Um, or in the Alps rather, but I know they have them in Scandinavia and probably other countries as well, and New Zealand, for example. And basically you can hike out to them. They're only accessible usually by foot or bike, and you can stay there. Um, they have, they do food for you, they have beds, so it's all like quite comfortable. Um, a little bit like the Scottish Bothy, but more comfortable most of the time. <laughs> so it should be really cool. First time going to a refuge with Aoife. Um, yeah, it'll be a great adventure, and we're excited to bring you guys along. our first call, which is Col de Fontaines. It's super windy up here. Um, we've got one more call and then it's just all downhill to the refuge. <laughs> It's feeling heavy today. <laughs> He's not sleeping there. Yeah. He's asleep. We're just dropping down to the refuge now. It's just down in the valley behind me. And um, 
pretty excited because I'm hoping that there's going to be hot chocolate there. So I'm going to have a Italian hot chocolate, which is definitely the best hot chocolate in the world. And this path down is beautiful. It's just covered in wildflower. Um, Harvey's getting a bit excited and he's taking those photos of the wildflower. So we're moving pretty slowly, but it doesn't really matter because it's a lovely day and we're almost there. <laughs> such an impressive valley. Yeah. It's amazing. Perfect consistency. A sock. So I've just come up to our room in the refuge and they are all like single bed kind of dorms, I guess you'd yeah. say. Yeah, I think there's either four or eight bedrooms. So we're in a four bedroom. Um, it's really quiet here. There's just actually two other people here at the moment and they're English as well. Um, they're doing the Autovia Uno route, Uno route, um, which is quite, sounds quite cool. Um, but yeah, I'll just show you the room. So here we go, we've got a bed there, and then we've pushed these two beds together, so we're going to sleep here. We um, bed share at home, so Aoife usually sleeps with us, so it's quite normal for us. Um, but obviously we had to adapt this setup a little bit, so she'll sleep on that side next to the wall, so there's no risk of her falling out of bed, and we'll just share my sleeping bag like over us. And there's Harvey. Hi. And there's the other bed. <laughs> oh, so, sleeping here. No, you can sleep <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. I mean, you can sleep there. You might get a better sleep. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of you guys who follow me on Instagram might know that I'm an ambassador for Findra this year, um, which is really cool because I have loved their products for years and it's really great to be supporting them and for them to be supporting me this year. Um, so if you don't know, Bindra are a Scottish based company and they specialise in merino wool products. So a few reasons that I really love merino wool are that it's temperature regulating. So obviously in the winter you can wear a merino wool layer as a base layer and it'll keep you nice and warm. But in the summer it also regulates your temperature when you're hot. So Harvey and I have both been wearing the merino wool um, Findra t-shirts today, which have just been, yeah, really nice. Um, it's also moisture wicking, so if you're sweating, it will wick away your sweat. And they barely, merino wool barely ever needs washing as well, so that's obviously great. <laughs> Especially when you're doing like a trip like this where you just want to be really minimal. So we basically will just air dry these out tonight and wear them again tomorrow. So I hardly packed anything for this trip. I've got this t-shirt which I'm wearing two days in a row and then um, I brought the Findra long sleeve cowl neck top which will just keep me warm this evening um, and I'll probably, I might sleep in it as well um, which I really like and Aoife's got her little buff <laughs> which has been keeping the sun off her face today. How do you like your buff Aoife? Do you like it? <laughs> 
So yeah, it's been really great to be working with them and I'll put some links down below to a few of the bits that I've been wearing on this trip as well if any of you guys are interested. <laughs> going on? <clears throat> oh, socks coming off. <laughs> you can't take them off. They've got to stay on. This is you getting ready for the day. Good girl. And off. Let's do this. We're going back the way we came, so we go along here, and then we're going back over this pass. So we're just leaving the refuge. We had a really good breakfast, and we had a really nice day there. Um, the lady who worked there was really lovely, and she said that Aoife was the youngest visitor that she's ever had, and yeah, she had to take... <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. I was like, really? Like, ever? And she was like, yeah. And um, she took a photo of Aoife to send to her mum because she was like, her mum, she said that her mum said she couldn't believe that there was a, a baby there. that is Becca di Trecare that we're thinking of going up and we just take this path here from the coal which is there so it just kind of follows the ridge um, apparently it's quite easy up until the very top where there's a little bit of rocks so even if we don't do that bit we're thinking of giving it a go the little one is fast asleep so we've just got to the point where the path split. So we're at the Col de Nanas, um, which is 2773. And we're at the point where the path split, so we could go up Becca di Trecare if we want, which is just over 3,000 meters. Um, we're just deciding whether or not to do that. Yeah, I think, um, well, we've got another just under 300 meters of ascent. Yeah. Uh, it's given an hour 
to get to the top. It says an hour, yeah, and it's yeah. taken us 40 minutes to get here, so we're kind of on track with what it's saying. Yeah, um, we've got a six hour window before the weather moves in. Before it says the weather's moving in, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of actually, I'm not sure if you can see, but there are some quite dark clouds rolling in, but they might just pass. Yeah, I think us. they, I don't think they're precipitation. No. I mean, they're definitely, they are clouds. Uh, hard to tell. I think we'll want to feed Aoife as we go up. Yeah, she's, we'll want to regulate her ears. She's fast asleep right now, so yeah. that's kind of making our decision like easier because yeah. we're like, oh well, she's quite happy for the moment. Um, obviously, she'll probably wake up on the way up, I would imagine, or on the way back, but probably on the way up. So I mean, I'm kind of like, I'm, def I'm definitely intrigued to go a little bit higher. Yeah. Even if we don't go to the summit. Yeah, I kind of just want to see what's around the corner because at the moment we can see the path and it goes around the corner and then you can't see. And we can see the summit up mm. there. Um, and everyone we've spoken to, by the way, we've, we spoke, we always like, it's great to speak to locals if you can. Um, we, we've spoken to two locals who've both said it's an easy path to get to the summit. Yep. Apart from the very top bit where it's a little bit scrambly, but we don't even have to do that. Yep. yep, um, yep. So, so yeah, it's, it's basically just more straightforward walking. Yeah, it's uh, a it's a hiking summit. It's, uh, obviously, it's at altitude, but it's a hiking summit. So. Yeah. And you know that's going to have an, a small effect on us because of the altitude. Yes. So we'll slow down a little bit, um, but I suppose within our decision making we don't want to be naive but we want to be kind of courageous we want to you know, see what we can do um obviously Aoife is part of the team yeah um if she's not happy then we turn around yeah I uh, kind of think we should start we should just start going up yeah see what it looks like see what the path looks like watch what this these clouds doing exactly. we've got quite a long time we both feel pretty good yeah, I feel, feel fresh. I, I feel, feel really fresh, I feel actually. found that quite easy going up to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we don't really have a lot more climbing from here other than we've got one more coal, but it's not that bad. And then yeah, it's, just it's just all downhill. It's just a big descent now, isn't it, really? So, like, physically, we could just see how we go, really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wise words there, guys. <laughs> yeah. See how we go. <laughs> well, I think it's not being naive. Like obviously, we we are contemplating. Like you know, we are. Weighing we're up. constantly evaluating what's constantly evaluating what's going the on. Yeah. And like you said before, and you just said, it's just like it's not about the summit. Yeah. It is. You know, it's about the adventure, I suppose. The journey. The journey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not about the summit, guys. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I was just saying, like. There's always a sense of achievement when you get to a summit. Um, you can't deny that. Yeah. We, the I, are I'm, really cool. yeah, they are. <laughs> oh, I might get the um, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a particularly summit-driven person. Um, I just enjoy being outside hiking. Um, but obviously, I still feel that sense of achievement when I get to a summit. It's great, and especially doing it with Ifa, it would be really cool. It would be really cool to do it but that's not what it's about for us. It's just about being out as a family and enjoying ourselves. So if we're not enjoying ourselves, then we're not gonna do it. Um, yeah. So on that note, we're gonna give it a go, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think um, let's, let's start making our yeah, way let's, up the path. Let's have a look at what's around the corner at least. <laughs> yeah, yep, sounds good. Sounds good. I'm awake. Hi, I'm here. Hey. Hi, Aoife. How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you got the mirror out. Yeah, yeah. This is just so handy. Yeah. Hello. So, uh, after all of that, Aoife's just woken up. So actually we've decided to just change her, her clothing. We're going to put her in a suit because obviously it's going to get cooler as we go up it's, the wind's picking up as well um, so we'll just get her out of a down jacket put her in a suit feed her to regulate her ears and um, and then we'll make a move yeah uh, also means I can put long lens on <laughs> so it just seemed like a, a good opportunity to as she's awoken and we're at the coal we'll just get this done quickly hi yeah.
happy. Happy, happy, let's go. Yeah. Oh, I might end up shedding this day out. top of Becca Tricara. Uh, you can see the pet, Petit Tourneline in the background and the Grand Tourneline. It's so nice to get up here. Yeah, look at this view. It is magnificent. So we've just been up to the summit of Becca di Trecare, um, which by the way is called that because it is where the three valleys meet, um, the valley, the Val Tonanche, Ayas, I can't remember if the last one is Chenail or Chamois, but yeah, that's pretty cool because we've been into all of those valleys while we've been here. And it was just, yeah, amazing to get up there. Um, it took us about 40 minutes from the pass up to the summit. Yeah. And yeah, how Ethan's good was that? Been happy as Larry. Yeah, she's a bit tired. So I think she's like trying to go to sleep and then we keep stopping and being like, Eva, smile for a photo. <laughs> <laughs> <Poor> girl. <laughs> Obviously we need to document her first like 3000 meter summit. So <laughs> for her, um, but yeah, really cool. And we're going to drop down to the pass now. Yeah. And Probably just beeline it. Beeline it out. Beeline it straight down. Maybe stop at the lake and have a picnic when we get down there. So we've just come back down to the coal and uh, we just get Aoife out of her soup now that we're down and it's a bit warmer. Just let her breathe a bit. So we're now going to head back down to Chanel and we'll probably, we may stop and have a picnic on the way um, and probably pick up a hot chocolate somewhere maybe. <laughs> Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, so yeah, it's just it's just now sort of a, a long descent back, which would be great. Kind of making the most of the day as well, because it's supposed to be rainy tomorrow. <laughs> She's got these very serious piercing eyes sometimes, but she just looks at you. <laughs> yes, I like mummy's hat. Ah. What is that thing you've got on your head, Mama? one she's all right she's just chewing on the buff and getting fed up with her daddy taking photos of flowers Should know. 